Hello, my name is Neto Rosatelli and welcome to the Cataract Surgery Channel. This commented surgery shows a case with a very small and slightly fibrotic pupil with pupillary adhesions and an anterior peripheral synechia due to trauma. The case was approached by using the BHEX pupil expander in a bimanual insertion technique I employ allowing for easier and automatic pupil engagement in very small pupils without resorting to pupil stretching. The main 2.8 mm incision is done along with a 1 mm left and also a right side port to help address the fibrotic pupil and the BHEX placement. The patient is under peribobal block, but I complement with intracameral 0.5 lidocaine. Dispersive OVD fills the anterior chamber and we are ready to go. First task is to liberate the pupil and a thin spatula will be used for that. It is most important to completely liberate any pupillary adhesion in order to be able to safely use the pupil expander device and also end up with a nice round and once again functional pupil. A second instrument helps holding the eye and the spatula is used to carefully break the peripheral anterior synechia without damaging the iris or the corneal endothelium. No corneal touch here. The spatula is then swept under the iris to break any posterior synechia and we can see that there is none. I go from the other side in an analog fashion. We can see that the main issue here are inflammatory pupillary membrane fibrotic remnants, which are better managed with a forceps. Anterior chamber OVD refill is done and I use an Inamura forceps to gently peel off the fibrotic tissue. Care is taken here to grab only the fibrotic band and I proceed in a circular fashion pulling in a tangential direction, this way minimizing the risk of peripheral iris dialysis. It is very important to be sure that no significant amount of fibrotic tissue is left behind or it will limit pupil dilation and lead to an iris radial tear. The pupil is now elastic again and able to be easily dilated. The thin and flexible BHEX needs no inserting devices or injectors and it is inserted in the anterior chamber in one smooth movement using a 23 gauge forceps. The first flange at 6 o'clock is readily engaged, but the others will be more difficult, it is a very small pupil. After insertion, a little more OVD is injected and I proceed to pupil engagement of the remaining flanges. Under 4.5 mm pupils are usually stretched to allow for user insertion of the BHEX, but here I decide to use a second instrument to help, an iris hook. The micro forceps goes from the main incision to grab the 2 o'clock flange and the iris hook delicately pulls the iris for an easy engagement. Now for the other flange at 10 o'clock, the forceps is switched to the left hand, going from the left side port, 
and the iris hook does its job from the right side, proving that nothing beats a perfect teamwork. A little repositioning and now we're talking. What a difference! A very challenging situation was overcome and a much easier and safer surgery can be performed. Anterior chamber OVD refilling is done again and situational assessments return a green light and we are go. My Inamura forceps is already elated to have done a beautiful side job in the pupil and eagerly performs the rexis within the confines of the dilated pupil to a perfect 5mm circle. Yeah, it really deserves some chest candy for this deployment. Next comes hydro dissection, very important here to later facilitate cortex removal, which is made more difficult due to the small pupil that hinders peripheral visualization. Fortunately, it is a relatively soft nucleus and I expect no difficult in its management. In small pupil cases, I like to make an initial trench, like in the stop and chop phaco technique, to immediately gain space and ensure an easy nucleus division, facilitating management in a restricted space environment. Anterior cortex cleanup is done for better visualization. A deep trench is performed and I use the trench wall for support to rotate the nucleus. I exercise caution here, for the eye has suffered blunt trauma and zonular compromise may be present. Mechanical fracturing follows and in instant the nucleus is completely divided for an easy emulsification. Staying in the center of the pupil, the safe zone, is important and the chopper helps in many ways, rotating the nucleus pieces, bringing them to the phacal tip, chopping fragments and performing the protective maneuvers such as protecting the pupil margin, the posterior capsule and also preventing pieces from bumping in the corneal endothelium. Inspection is done to ensure there are no hidden remaining nucleus pieces and cortex removal is next. Here I'm using a coaxial IA handpiece with a polymer tip, very safe in these cases when the peripheral cortex aspiration is done with poor visualization. A second instrument can help by pushing the ring around as needed and aspiration is made safer. Some cortical capsular adhesion areas can be seen here. This eye has suffered chronic inflammation and the capsule presents some fibrotic areas that will not clean easily. Little peripheral cortex left behind will be of no consequence. Patience and care are essential now to avoid a capsule accident and one must exercise good judgment as to when to stop. 
The central posterior capsule is polished and peripheral inspection helps identify hidden cortex left behind. There is only a small center of fibrotic opacity, but let's call it quits. The eye is filled with OVD again to allow for IOL implantation, easily done with the BHEX still in place. The BHEX is easily disengaged from the pupil and removed it from the eye. What a wonderful device! Very effective and easy to use, completely unobtrusive. I love it! Info on the BHEX is found at the Mad Invent Devices site, link on the description below. OVD evacuation is in order now, and the best way to do it is in a methodical fashion to be sure of complete aspiration. The chopper helps, of course, preventing pupil margin aspiration and providing visualization. Lifting the iris like that is necessary to ensure OVD evacuation from the peripheral space between the iris and the capsular bag, or in other words, the posterior chamber. We must also perform under the IOL aspiration, a little clumsy to do, but necessary. Let's go for the other side of the bag also. We can see that thanks to all the care and measures we took in managing this fibrotic pupil and use of the pupil expansion device, the pupil ends up nicely round and functional, an outstanding achievement taking in consideration the initial aspect. Incisions are hydrated and mission accomplished. I hope these tips help you in managing small pupil cases, where use of a pupil expansion device is always the smart choice for ease and safety. Patience, planning and care always pay off in complicated cases, for a most satisfying result in this one. Search Neto Rosatelli on YouTube or click on the link below and visit my other channel with cataract FACO clips. Please like, share, subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.